Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video having seen the Deadpool movie and I loved it. I give it a wholehearted recommend. A full review of that movie will be coming to my Articulation Assembled podcast. Yes, I have a podcast, people. Go listen to it. It's on iTunes, Stitcher and SoundCloud. Check out those links in the description beneath this video. But back to today's business and my reviews of the Marvel Legends Captain America Red Skull Bath Wave roll on with Demolition Man. Oh. Or is it Scourge? Well, the back of the packaging calls him Demolition Man, but we'll get to just which he is soon. But he is also labelled here by Hasbro as a mercenary of mayhem paired under that banner with Taskmaster. With their joint bio reading, powered by disguise and mimicry, these villains may not be original, but they are deadly. Then the packaging back also pictures the Red Skull or Red Onslaught bath on the left there, which I'm really looking forward to reviewing. Then the rest of the series comprises Captain America, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. combo of Mockingbird and Sharon Carter, the Forces of Evil pairing of Whirlwind and Cottonmouth, and Demolition Man as we have here and his fellow mercenary of Mayhem Taskmaster. Here he is out of packaging and I have to say immediately Demolition Man and I have started out on the wrong foot as a as soon as I opened him, I noticed that his left leg was kind of wobbly. And under closer inspection, I realized that's because the peg in his lower knee, as you can see there, is broken. In that it snapped and lacking the part that should fit into the hole in the leg there, creating a secure and tight joint. Now I've likely just got real unlucky here, and with my background in customizing, it is a relatively easy remedy, but it's the principle of the thing. Prices of Marvel Legends have been creeping up. I mean, Toys R Us's website is listing this wave at a whopping $24.99 each. When it comes to paying prices like that and still getting quality control issues like these, it's a bit of a slap in the face. Phew, and with that off my chest, let me address the question of, is it Demolition Man or is it Scourge? Well, the answer is, it's both. Demolition Man, who longtime viewers may remember from my very own custom, was superhumanly strong, but as is often the case, wasn't the sharpest tool in the tool shed. The D on his chest, in fact, could equally stand for doofus. Yet in wanting to be a hero, his heart was in the right place. So costumed like two of his hero idols, Daredevil and Wolverine, he became a sometime sidekick of Captain America, which in itself is a bumpy road. Just ask Bucky. And for Demolition Man, and that road included becoming homeless and living in a sewer. But I digress. Moving on to Scourge, and Scourge is a name taken by a number of different characters over the years, all connected by the desire to take out criminals vigilante style. With the latest Scourge being none other than Demolition Man, kitted out as we see here and brainwashed by Hydra, ultimately bringing him into confrontation with his old pal Captain America. But hey, at least it got him out of the sewer, right? So it's not all bad. To to achieve the look, Hasbro have reused one of their older bodies, and it's a bit surprising as to which one, as it's Movie Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Who'd have thunk it? The addition of all the various straps and pouches of his harness makes for quite the transformation, of course, different hands, a new head, and new shoulders. Speaking of those shoulders, each of them has a trio of dots. Am I the only one that sees the two upper dots as eyes, the lower one as a mouth? It's a cute little character going, <gasps> Something I've noticed, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that, but if you look at the deco, those white parts on either side of his chest, they're asymmetrical, not quite level. But looking to the comic art for reference, and there it does seem like those white parts should be symmetrical. Taking a closer look, and the helmet has a design flaw that leaves an Achilles heel exposed, or in this case, Achilles ears. Yeah, that's right, if you want to be Scourge, just box his ears. And the sculpt does convey a sense of menace, heightened further by the red paint of the eyes, nicely outlined with black. In style, it reminds me of Crossbones, yet further still, Jason X. But honestly, that might just be me clutching at straws and trying to spice it up in my own mind. Moving on to accessories and his trio of weapons, I do find to be quite the letdown. Now I have heard, I'm not sure if it's true or not, that toy companies are under pressure from anti-gun lobbyists to make weapons that come with action figures less realistic looking. I guess because that's a quicker fix than actually addressing the ills in society that makes people want to shoot each other. But I'm not sure why else they've made them brown, like they're carved from wood. Actually, they're chocolate colored. They look less like they're made by 
by Gun Factory, and more made by Oompa Loompas at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Oompa Loompa, Doompa Dee Doo, we have made some weapons for you. Now his right hand is posed with a trigger finger and designed really to hold a gun, so it doesn't maintain the tightest grip on his knife, whereas his left hand has a much tighter grip suited to holding this knife. Plus it does fit neatly into a sheath mounted on his belt. Likewise, his handgun can be squirreled away into a holster on his hip. Now the handgun is too large to fit into his left hand, but as I said, his right hand has a trigger finger poised to hold it. Yet held in that hand, it does seem to angle down slightly. Unlike the handgun, the hilt of the rifle is small enough that it can fit into his left hand. Yet with his trigger fingered right hand, it is perhaps best suited in that hand with the trigger finger in the trigger guard. However, I can't really get him to hold the rifle two-handed in any kind of realistic looking pose. And with the broken leg on mine, he might be better suited to using the rifle not as a weapon, but as a crutch. Now looking at articulation and his head rotates side to side, he is able to look down this far and then the head hinges up this far. Then at the shoulder the arm rotates and it hinges up to about a right angle to the body. There's upper arm rotation followed by a double jointed elbow. Then at the wrist the hand rotates and it's also hinged moving down and up. There's waist rotation followed by an ab crunch which moves this far forward and then it moves this far back. Surprisingly, it's not really inhibited by the harness there, which actually has some really nice sculpted detail to it. I particularly like the gold deco of the ammo. At the hips, his legs move out really quite far. They move a decent amount forward, and then they move this far back. There's upper leg rotation, followed by a double jointed knee. Then there's rotation again at the top of the boot. And then at the ankle, the feet are hinged, moving backwards and forwards, but that hinge is inhibited by the sculpt there. And then they have that crazy ankle rocker pivot that I love, with this being his widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor. So all things considered, and I just don't really like this demolition man or scourge, whichever you want to call him. And that's not just because of the obvious quality control flaw, as in fact, really that flaw is the cherry on the cake of my general towards this action figure. I just like a bit more super with my superheroes and super villains. Whereas Demolition Man as here looks as much about to depart on a real world tour of Afghanistan as he is to mix it up in the bright fantasy of the Marvel Universe. I guess I'm saying I just like a bit more comic flair to my characters and less G.I. Joe. And sure that militarized look will float the boat of many, just not mine. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mattel's Creator W. WWE Superstar line. It's similar to Hasbro's Hero Mashers. It expands the wrestlers beyond the wrestling ring into wider contexts. So for instance, this Roman Reigns is dubbed the Enforcer set. It looks surprisingly like what we're getting here. To me, it just represents a generic Enforcer look that's not particularly imaginative. <laughs> Anyway, click this video for a supervillain that was a bit more to my liking in the form of Whirlwind. And I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.